When the original Raspberry Pi was released in 2012, it created a whole movement of developers, hobbyists and educationalists who used the small ARM-based board to create, hack and teach. It succeeded for three main reasons. First of all, it was a full desktop computer. It had compilers so you could write programs. Secondly, it had a set of general purpose input-output pins, GPIO pins, that could be connected to motors and sensors and so many other different things, similar to what you'd get on microcontroller platforms like the Arduino. And thirdly, and probably most importantly, it only cost $35. Well, that was 2012, and since then, the single board computer market has changed quite significantly. And today we're going to be looking at four boards that are available in 2015 that could be alternatives to the original Raspberry Pi. Now the four boards I've chosen are ones that I personally have, ones that I have used, ones that I have reviewed, ones that I've spent time with. In the written article that goes with this video, I've included links and suggestions to other boards that you also might want to consider. But in this video, I'm only using ones that I have personal experience of. Now the four boards I've chosen are the Raspberry Pi 2, the Odroid C1, the Hummingboard IEX2, and the Mix Creator CI20. So let's take a look at them. The SBC market is heavily dominated by ARM, and three of the four boards that we're looking at today have ARM Cortex-based processors. The exception is the MIPS CI20 Creator, which has a dual-core MIPS processor. Now, before we start to compare all of these boards together, I think it'd be good if I formally introduce you to each one. Although the Raspberry Pi 1 was enormously successful, there was one complaint. The overall performance of the board was lacking, especially when running desktop applications. The performance was less than desirable because it used a single core CPU clocked at just 900 MHz. Considering the cost, the innovation of the board and its versatility, then the performance was perfectly understandable. But there was room for an improvement. And that improvement came in the form of the Raspberry Pi 2, which uses a quad-core processor and doubles the amount of RAM. Even though the Pi 2 is more powerful and has more memory, the Raspberry Pi Foundation managed to keep the price exactly the same. And this really was a guarantee for success. So quickly looking at the specifications for the Raspberry Pi 2, it uses a 900 MHz quad-core ARM Cortex-A7 processor from Broadcom, has a video core 4 GPU, 1 gigs of RAM, and the storage is provided by an SD card slot. You also get four USB ports, HDMI, Ethernet, and an audio jack output. There are also, of course, the GPIO pins, a camera interface, and so on, and its price is just $35. One company that has managed to build a board for the same basic price as the Raspberry Pi is Hard Kernel. Called the Odroid C1, it costs just $35, and like the Raspberry Pi, uses a quad-core processor. The Odroid C1 isn't the only SBC that Hard Kernel make, but it's the cheapest. Details about their other boards can be found in the written companion. Looking at the specs of the Odroid C1, it uses a 1.5 GHz quad-core ARM Cortex-A5 CPU. It has a Mali 450 GPU, 1 GB of RAM. Storage is provided by SD card or eMMC module. And then, of course, you get the four USB ports, a micro HDMI port, gigabit Ethernet, infrared remote control receiver, the GPIO pins, and a battery backup connector for the real-time clock. It costs just $35. Another company which offers several different SBCs is Solid Run. All of their boards are built around Freescale's IMX6 series of processors. The IMX6 range is based on ARM's Cortex A9 design and scales from single to quad core. The Hummingboard i2EX uses a dual core IMX6 processor and comes with 1 gig of RAM, but it also has the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi 1. In fact, it will even fit into a case designed for the first generation Pi. The Hummingboard i2EX uses a 1 GHz dual-core Cortex-A9 based CPU and the GC2000 GPU. It comes with 1 GB of RAM and has an SD card slot for storage. You also get two USB ports, HDMI, Ethernet and an infrared remote control receiver. On board you also have the GPIO pins and a connector for a real-time clock battery. It costs $110.
The one board in our lineup which doesn't use an ARM-based processor is the MIPS CI20 Creator. At its heart is a dual-core MIPS-based processor coupled with a PowerVR GPU and backed by 1 gigs of RAM. It is also unique in that it includes its own built-in storage, plus Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. At just $65 it's more expensive than the Odroid C1 and the Raspberry Pi 2, but you are getting more for your money. And so that's the hardware. Well, what about the software? Well, all the boards are capable of running at least two operating systems. They all run Linux and three of the four run Android. The only board that doesn't run Android is the Raspberry Pi 2. That's because the Raspberry Pi Foundation don't see Android as a priority and apparently there are some porting difficulties with some missing drivers from Broadcom. However, the other three boards all do run Android 4.4 KitKat. Now, they're all also capable of running Android 5.0 Lollipop. However, none of the board manufacturers have actually released a firmware at this time. To judge the relative performance of Android on each of these boards, I will use the following criteria. Features, performance and support for Google's services. The two main Android features that distinguish one board from another are support for sound over HDMI and the support for USB flash drives. The best board in terms of these features is the Odroid C1. The humming board and the CA20 don't support USB flash drives under Android and the CA20 doesn't support sound over HDMI. Scoring each board out of four, four features, the Odroid C1 gets the maximum four points, the humming board gets three points, and the CI20 gets two points. Next, performance. Using Antutu as a guide to the relative performance, the Odroid C1 scores 15,887, and the humming board i2EX scores 12,198. I wasn't able to test the CI20, but according to comments I've seen on the internet, it scores less than the other two. So scoring again out of four points, the Odroid gets a maximum of four, the Humming Board gets three, and the CI20 gets two. Finally, in terms of support for Google Play and Google services, the Humming Board comes with Google Play pre-installed, whereas the Odroid C1 doesn't include Google services by default, but you can install them via a quick hack. The CI20 doesn't include any support for Google services whatsoever. Therefore, scoring each board again out of four points for Google Play support, the Humming Board gets four points, the Odroid C1 gets three points, and the CI20 scores two. Since the Raspberry Pi doesn't support Android at all, it will unfortunately score zero points for this section. So let's add up the totals, and this is what we get. In first place, we have the Odroid C1 with 11 points, and then close right behind it is the Humming Board i2EX with 10 points. Next comes the CI20 Creator with six points, and finally the Raspberry Pi with zero. All four boards support Linux, and they support it well. To try and judge which board supports Linux the best, I will use the following criteria. The number of distributions supported, performance, and the amount of free memory available after a fresh boot into the desktop. The board which supports the most distributions is the Raspberry Pi 2, largely due to the sheer size of its user community. The Raspberry Pi 2 is such a popular platform, and it receives a lot of attention when it comes to porting. However, the Odroid C1 isn't too far behind and neither is the humming board. Last but not least comes the MIPS CI20. Partly because it's a relatively new board and partly because it uses a MIPS-based processor rather than an ARM-based processor, the number of distributions is less on the CI20. However, it's still quite respectable and includes Debian, Gentoo and Angstrom. Therefore, the scores for the Linux distribution section are Raspberry Pi 4 points, Odroid C1 and Humming Board tied on 3 points, and the CI20 1 point. As for performance, the OpenSSL command line tool has a speed option which tests the performance of its various cryptographic algorithms. It also provides a good way to judge the relative performance of one CPU compared to another. The scores are quite revealing. The fastest board of the four in terms of CPU performance without using the GPU is the Odroid C1. Next comes the Humming Board, followed by the Raspberry Pi 2. Last place, but not by much, goes to the CI20. As a result, the scores for the performance section are Odroid 4 points, Humming Board 3 points, Raspberry Pi 2 points, and the CI20 1 point. Since these boards all have 1GB of RAM, it's important how much free memory remains once the board boots up into the desktop. Graphical user interfaces can be memory hogs, and each of the board uses a lightweight window manager to try and conserve memory. The most frugal board is the Raspberry Pi 2, which had over 800 megs free after booting. Next comes the CI20, which had over 700 megs, followed by the C1, which had 400 megs, and finally the Humming board, which had 300 megs. So the score for the free memory tests are Raspberry Pi 4 points, the CI20 3 points, the Odroid C1 2 points, and the Humming board 1 point. 
Therefore, adding up all the scores for this section, the results of the Linux tests are as follows. Raspberry Pi is the overall winner with 10 points, the Odroid C1 9 points, in third place the Hummingboard i2EX with 7 points, and in fourth place the CI20 Creator with 5 points. All four boards should support Kodi. So to test the performance of Kodi, I use its internal codec display information to show the frame rate and the amount of CPU time being used to decode the video. I then produce a full HD 50 megabits a second version of my ZTE Blade S6 Plus review video and played it on each board. The Odroid C1 and the Hummingboard i2EX both did an excellent job of displaying the video. Both managed to consistently show the video at its full frame rate and neither taxed the CPU too much. The same can't be said for the Raspberry Pi, which disappointingly could only manage 9 frames a second, instead of the needed 23.97 frames per second. And unfortunately I couldn't find an easily accessible version of Kodi to run on the CI20, and neither could I find a video player to play the video from any of the online repositories. So the scores for this section are Odroid C1 4, the Hummingboard 4, Raspberry Pi 2 and the CI20 0. The big news that accompanied the release of the Raspberry Pi 2 was that Microsoft will be releasing a version of Windows 10 for the small board. However, we might be disappointed because it's not going to be a full version of Windows, it's going to be a Windows 10 for Internet of Things devices, and it may not even include a desktop. However, besides Windows 10, the Raspberry Pi 2 also supports RISCOS, NetBSD, FreeBSD, and OpenWRT. As for the other boards, they support a limited range of other operating systems besides Android and Linux. For example, the Humming board supports FreeBSD and the Odroid C1 supports NetBSD. Also, the CI20 MIPS-based board supports NetBSD and there is work going on to port OpenWRT. Therefore, for this section, I will give the full four points to the Raspberry Pi 2 as it has the broadest support and each of the other three boards will each get two points. A big factor in picking an SBC is the size of the various online communities. You might ask yourself how many people are there blogging about this board? How many videos are there available on YouTube? Are there books? Can you readily get help from the forums? And so on. There is little doubt that the Raspberry Pi 2 community is the largest. This is mainly due to because of the success of the original Raspberry Pi. However, it's also clear that the community has embraced the new Pi 2 board with the same passion. It's hard to judge between the online communities of the Odroid and the Humming board, but roughly speaking, in broad terms, they are approximately the same. The CI20 has the smallest community, partly due to its relative newness. As a result, the Raspberry Pi 2 will score 4 points for this section. The Odroid C1 and the Humming board will get 3 points each, and the CI20 scores 1 point. So we've tested Android, we've tested Linux, we've looked at the support for other operating systems, we've considered the online communities, so which board is the best? Well, without further ado, here are the results. In fourth place comes the MIPS Creator CI20 with a total of 14 points. In third place comes the Raspberry Pi 2 with a total of 20 points. In second place comes the Humming Board with a total of 26 points. And in first place, our winner for this SBC comparison is the Odroid C1 with a total of 29 points. And so there you have it, the Odroid C1 is our overall winner. Congratulations to Odroid. Now that might be a bit of a surprise to you, maybe you were thinking the Pi 2 would win, but really the Pi 2 fell down in our test because it doesn't support Android. If you take away the Android scoring from our results, actually the Pi 2 does beat the Odroid C1 by just a couple of points. But of course, the weaknesses of the Raspberry Pi 2 are more than just the fact it doesn't support Android. It's also slower than the Odroid C1 and slower than the Humming Board. In fact, the MIPS CI20 Creator is actually itself only just slightly slower than the Raspberry Pi 2. Also, Kodi isn't working very well on the Pi 2 at the moment. Now, that could be a software issue, and I'm sure it will be fixed in the future. But at the moment, the C1 and the Humming Board do a better job of displaying high bitrate video. Now, of course, the online community of the Raspberry Pi 2 is absolutely massive. It's unequaled. And really, that does compensate for some of these other weaknesses that we've talked about. And if you're buying a single board computer for the first time, really still the Raspberry Pi is the best uh, online community to get into because of its immense size. 
There is also the issue of the price of the Odroid C1. Although it costs $35 directly from the manufacturer, I've read online that some people are experiencing high shipping charges because it gets shipped directly from Korea, and by the time it gets to your country, you might have incurred quite a large cost. Having said that, I got my board from a European distributor directly, and it cost 44 euros, which when you do the calculations for today is about $10 more than the uh, price of a Raspberry Pi 2. So that wasn't too bad for me. So if you want a board without Android support, then probably should go with the Raspberry Pi 2. But if you want Android, which of course we at Android Authority think is important, if you want Android, then you really need to go with the Odroid C1. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please use the comments below to tell me what you think about these four different boards. Do you have a Raspberry Pi? Do you have an Odroid C1? Tell me what you think about those boards. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. And as for me, I'll see you in my next video.